Okay, it's a decision day. Let's just see how you are hosting today. What it is, decisions are coming from the heart today. And if you're not making heart-based decisions, if you're making them over money, or if you're making them over process or something that you have to do, today's decisions aren't going to work out that good. So if you are feeling it right now, if you've been feeling like there's something that's been coming up, today's the day to get it done. Put in the comments how you're feeling specifically today. And give me a bunch of likes and hit this button here and send it out to a bunch of friends. <clears throat> so put down in the comments how you're feeling today. Are you feeling the weight of the decision? Have you already made a decision? Lots of stress in my car today. <laughs> I can't hear you. Um, my energy is so low. Interesting. I'm curious to see how you guys are feeling. Put in what's going on with you. Good morning, good morning. Irritated, feeling energized. If you guys can do me a favor and give me a bunch of likes and hit that button there, send it out to some friends. Uh, we have the earlier programs on and it doesn't send it out. It thinks that we're still doing the earlier program. Did the video with me yesterday feel great? That's awesome. Now I can hear you, you can hear me, good. We're getting ready to get breathless eye on here. Denise was amazing today. Thank you. I'm sure she'd love to hear that. <coughs> Any advice with severe uh, sinus infections? Yes, the upper, if you have a severe sinus infection, do the upper reset two to three times per day and use diatomaceous syrup and iris sea moss that will help the body clear through the uh, infection. And some of the things that you can do, one of the things you can do, it works really well, take a garlic clove, uh, completely raw, stick it up your nose, stick them in your ears, and that will help with the sinus infection. Okay, let's bring up Breath Messiah. Let's get started. You want a chair? Essential tremors. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, Gary? How you doing, Isaiah? Doing good. How are you feeling today? Looks like I got some rain happening here. Okay. okay. You're not in the you're not in the cold front in Mexico, is there? It's not a cold front? Yeah. And see, can you see the rain? Yeah. Yeah. Is there a cold front here? Oh my God. No, I'm asking because everywhere else in the country, you know what I mean? In the upper. Oh yeah. But that's why I'm here. Uh, and that's what I'm that's doing. why you guys are there. I mean, somebody has to be there to experience the cold to let me know it's cold. So I don't For go sure. back. For sure. Yeah, if you weren't there, I might, I might have the, Hey, I want to go back up into North America. Yeah. I might want to go back up into the United States or into Canada and then then I get a then I get on a live with you and I'm like, there's no way I'm going back. <laughs> what what would you say is the biggest difference that your body feels just not having to endure the? Well, you know? I think there's a couple of things. We stay inside when we're uh, when it's cold out, so um, we don't get as much vitamin D. That's one thing. Um, the other thing that happens is when it's cold out, um, and I mean there's some benefits to cold too. Um, you tend to not be as active. You tend to to uh, to slow down, not move as much, and stuff like that. And I, I like to be active. I like the sun. I like to be active. I mean, again, there's benefits to cold. I just don't like living in it all the time. I like going to it for a period of time. Yeah. No, I'm with you on that. That's why I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to understand your migration pattern. And yeah, just actually just uh, just look at any of the birds that are outside in your lawn as they're coming through. And when they start going this way, just go with them. There you go. My, my, I migrate with the birds. Which bird do you follow? What's on your totem? The loony. The Canada goose. It's going to be too loud. Learn. Is that really loud, by the way? Not really. Oh, okay. It's like, okay. It's like a good, good like, ambiance music in the background. Like that. Yeah, I'm getting a good, good, good rain here. Look at oh, yeah. 
We're getting a good, good, good rain. We're getting a downpour all of a sudden. Funny, uh, we, this is day two of the reset. And um, so uh, we're doing it as a team. We're, uh, we're doing it in the mornings on the beach, which we haven't done in a while. And I forgot how beautiful it is and how inspiring it is to be on the beach when the sun comes up in the morning. I mean, it changes everything. Yeah. I saw there's a study that says um, something like if you have a picture of a sunrise or sunset, as well as seeing it on a regular basis, like drastically changes your overall mood, awareness, perception, because it's like, this is a highlight. This is like, you're like watching the, the day start and begin from a like, okay. So it's like, it's like a triple mirror effect almost. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 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 I can, I can relate to that. I mean, we, the first time in my life was a year ago when we did, uh, we did sunrise every day at the beach. And we did that for about nine months. And, and literally, I only missed three days or four days in nine months. And that had a profound effect on my life. It really did. Um, it changed. It gave me more completion, I would say. Um, days didn't blend into each other. You knew that it was, start. it was starting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, quite often, depending on where we were, we would have sunset too. But we only do one here because of driving time. I mean, we get a we get a we get a sunset, but not not right to the horizon. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the, the next place we go. The next place we go, we'll have sunrise and sunset and beach. And how how did you pick out the the destination that you guys did pick? Oh, we haven't picked it yet. Still waiting for it. Yeah, we're waiting for property to come. We're looking we're looking to put about uh, between eighty and hundred units on. The idea is is that when we bring people together, we collaborate, we work together, we can massively impact the world. That's what we did. You know, four of us live together, work together, um, and as we built this media empire, and that's what actually that's what did it because we had no space and time. Like it's not going to work and fast. We were we lived in it every day, and because of that, uh, we were able to reach so many people. Now imagine a hundred people yeah. doing that. Uh, and then the influence of a hundred people sharing their stories there. Yeah. That's super powerful. So what do we got on the table? By the way, that's not, is that not too loud for you? Is it okay? It, it, it sounds good. Honestly, I think it sounds good. You can ask people in the chat and see what they think, but I think it's, okay. I think it's ambient. You know what I mean? It's, 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 uh, I, I was just thinking about this yesterday. If every room, because we're inside and we're disconnected from natural sounds, what would happen if we were playing natural sounds inside and how much would that really affect us? Oh, it's, it, it makes a big difference. I mean, uh, the natural sounds, uh, like here in the morning, having all the birds and the jungle birds and that, you know, wake us up, makes a big difference. Like it really does. And, you know, when I'm in Lions Bay uh, up in Canada, we, we only hear, you get up to the birds in the morning. You know, in the summertime, the birds are chirping at 4 a.m. Yeah, same yeah. here. Same here. Yeah. It's almost like, come on, come on, bird. Like, all right, I get it. I get it. I'll get it. I get it. You know what it is? Is their chirping opens up the receptors of the, the trees. Yeah. yeah, and the trees. Yeah. So off of that, obviously birds sleep, right? But, like, sometimes at 3 a.m. you can still hear birds chirping. So do they? They sleep when they feel like it. Do they sleep when they I don't know? Sleep? I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm trying to think. I mean, I'm in the mountains. I only hear them uh, just before the sunrise. Here, I'm not sure. Now, come to think of it, I'm gonna. Now that you said that, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna actually go out at night and take a look. I mean, I I can see them moving around yeah. after dark. Yeah. Hmm. We got a rooster over here that. Likes to likes to make his presence known in the morning. Roost. Well, let's see. Are we ready to get started? How we? So let's first just see how we feel first. I feel I tired. A lot of people are feeling tired. I believe. Yeah, yeah that's what I remember you saying. I think what, it's. What is, I think okay. it's um you know because I've been trying to figure out if there's something. It's not my environment. I mean, it, it's, it's definitely to do with the energy of Capricorn, this, this heavier energy. Yeah. And what is, 
today what is the what is the um grandmaster capricorn day today's a decision day today's uh the day that the decisions that you make are going to carry out for the rest of the year but also partly for the rest of your life today is one of those decisions that <clears throat> that has to be made from the heart if it's made out of stress or for money or anything like that it's the wrong decision if you don't make decisions on your heart today you will pay a price if you make decisions on your heart today everything will work out the the universe will come in and support your heart-based decision not your mind-based decision yeah uh, okay so it's almost like getting to the inner knowing instead of trying to analyze or think about it just whatever decision you make make sure it's really from your core of your being correct yeah. And, you know, and most people are just connected from the heart. So, you know, including me most of my entire life until recently. And and I'm still opening up like I, I still get I have all you know, you think about it. I have all these friends and people that I know that are psychics and channels and all that. So anytime I'm off a little bit, I got like 20 people. Hey, your heart's not open or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I know it's not open. I'm working on it. Damn it. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for being the 10th person to tell me that this week yeah no but it but it, it's, a, it's a process it, i don't think it's i think people are waiting for it to be something but it's a journey it's it, it it's supposed to open and close over time and that's natural yeah the fluctuation is important if we all felt great all the time what would we really you know what i mean we wouldn't appreciate what it means to to not feel yeah lucky. yeah yeah feeling great is feeling great is only a perspective <laughs> Yeah, somebody's been in pain for a long time and a level eight or nine and is that level four pain, they're like, man, I feel great yeah. today. <laughs> Perspective. All right, so what I want us all to do is stand up, sit down wherever you're at, just make some space, maybe just twist, do some twists, get your body ready. And before we even take our first breath, just be aware of any places in your body that might be tight, stiff, holding on to old things from the past, or are just ready to um, be renewed. Yeah, actually, I have, I have a, interesting enough, um, I can tell it's gallbladder on my left side. I, other stuff's opening up, but I can tell I got a little bit of tightness on my gallbladder up the left side here. Cool. Yeah, that's new. So something's moving. All right, so we're going to do, so I just thought of something really fun. So you know how in, um, you ever went slip and sliding, like as a kid, like, or even in your adult life, like, or down the slide going head first? Yeah. All right, so that's that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna start with our hands like right here. Yeah. And when you inhale, you're gonna pull those shoulders back. When you exhale, you're gonna imagine yourself going down the slide. So you're just pushing your head, your arms all the way forward and exhaling it. Okay. Up. Like imagine you have to push yourself. Are we breathing into our yep, nose? In through your nose, pulling it back, exhale out your mouth. You're going forward like you're pretending to go down the slide. Hands down yep. too or hands up? Yep, and just like that. Awesome. Uh, here, here we go. We're going to do six of them. Every breath, try to go a little bit more. Inhale deep. And release. Again, nice and tall. Exhale, push it out. Nice and tall. Exhale, use your legs. Don't be afraid. Three more and release. Last two. Release. Last one. And relax. Yeah, it's always uh, uh, always gets me at an angle or a an area that I don't normally yeah. feel it. So I love it with these. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's just keep that same. So basically today, it's about imagination. Imagination and like, let yourself explore. Explore your breath, explore your body, and have fun. So the next one is 
we're gonna pretend like we could do one-handed cartwheels. So when you inhale, you're gonna go all the way up and around. You're exhaling once you get to the back half. So it's inhale, top half. Exhale once you get to the back half. Okay. Okay, we'll do six each side. Start with your right hand. Here we go. Inhale all the way big. Think full range of motion. Keep breathing bigger. Think bigger. Even bigger. Halfway there. Last two. Follow your hand. Last one. Last one. And then just walk around a little bit, see how you feel. Yeah, feeling uh, livelier. I'm feeling some heaviness coming out of my chest and my head. Like I was feeling heavy through here, actually. Okay. So what? So for that example, right? What? What? With knowing what you feel, what would be the fashion maneuver that you would recommend? Well, bladder release. So right hand on the belly button or on the center bone to the right, down just down where the rib cage goes. Push in. Left hand up here. Breathe in to the mouth. Two. Three. Through the nose. Two, two. Three. I no longer want to hold anger and resentment in my body. No longer want to hold resentment and anger in my body. I'm replacing it with compassion and understanding. I'm replacing it with compassion and understanding. I really think it's the emotions, man, because that's lightening me up quite a bit. I think it's like I'm going to the beach, I'm doing my 28 day yeah. reset, and I'm blowing out a whole bunch, opening up a whole bunch of emotions. I'm coming back, and I, I literally come back from the beach, and I have to lie down between my beach run at 6 a.m. and my live at, at 11. I have to lie down, and I'm like, this is weird. weird. So yeah. your body can let it actually process and finish the, the, the path. Yeah, how do you feel after doing that? I feel like um, more. Like, I don't even know the word, just like more flow in my lower, uh, this yeah. area. Yeah, stomach. Because my the things that I've been feeling lately is like stomach and solar plexus. If I feel discomfort, that's those. Yeah, areas. so two years ago during Capricorn, I was in level nine pain right here for the entire month. It literally started at zero degree Capricorn and ended at 29 degrees. And... And it was like, and I knew it was like, I, I actually, I'll, I'll, I'll play this. I'll put this in the lifestyle artist, um, somewhere. I'll put it in the, in, into the, into the ground. But I actually recorded an end of life message <clears throat> because I was in so much pain one day. I didn't know what to do about it. I just knew that. I mean, I can't, I, I already know I, I go to a hospital. They have nothing that they can do. I mean, I watch people go into pain in the hospital all the time. There's nothing they can do. They're just making you feel better. Yeah. You know, they give you, they give you. You a, they can give you a painkiller, but I'd already I'd already used ketamine. Yeah. I'd already used THC. Yeah. You used the tools that you knew that you had available to you, and it still didn't do much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and, and it was like I know all the protocols in the hospital. I know exactly what they would have done, and I'm like, there's nothing that they can do. There is, and but I'm like, what what would I do if this continues? Like, if this doesn't go away, what do I do? Yeah. 
And I had a moment there where I just, if that's it, that's it, you know, and that I, I had a couple moments like that through my detox, through my yeah. resetting of my body where, where it was just like in, insurmountable, like there's something I didn't even know I could deal with. And I, and that brought out emotions. And now looking back at it, I was trying to avoid the feelings or emotions. So now when it comes up, I go, okay, that's an emotion. Like we just had, yeah. that's a release of resentment and anger. I feel, I feel more awake. What would you say, what would you say to, um, because obviously you probably are aware of detox symptoms and just the process much greater than most people because you've done it, you've seen it, you witness it on a daily basis. How can people be prepared for that emotional detox or that I think detox? It, when the detox starts to happen, what people do is they run to alleviate the pain. This is the mistake that I made for many years because I, the next year at Capricorn, I had the same thing but it was way less but i didn't deal with the emotion so the first thing is to deal with the emotion you're okay in your body i will be okay this is something my body will this get to because pass, the, the yeah. narrative of it is like something's wrong i don't know what's wrong i don't know if i'm okay what if it was cancer what if it was this what if all these things you start thinking about start coming up and and now now knowing back at it, this is why I've recorded my whole journey. We have, I've showed rashes come up on my body. I've showed everything, my teeth, everything you can imagine. I showed to people because I'm, I want them to know that it's not as scary as they think. The body will heal itself, but we're taught that it doesn't. And, and because it doesn't, we need somebody to fix us. It's just, it's, it, it's, the one thing that I see people do is they run to a doctor or a hospital yeah. when they start detoxing or they run a medication. That's the worst thing that you can do. Yeah. And, and what would you say? Because like for me, it's like whenever there's intense pain, I know it's my responsibility to feel into it and to like, to basically go into it and find the nervous system relaxation. Yeah. Even if Acknowledging the pain, talking yeah. to it, even yeah. if I don't know what it is. It's like, hello, pain. I see yeah. you there. Thank you for being here. Thank you for showing me what I need to see. I'm open to seeing what I what you want me to see. Just by acknowledging the pain, it drops by fifty percent usually right away. Yeah, yeah. And, and and I think a lot of times is because we're in pain, so we think something's wrong. It's like a dissociation. So now, correct. How how can you create accept? Like for me, anytime my hips or anything is hurting, I like you said, I put my hands on it, I breathe into it, and I just like. Tell myself like whatever you're trying to tell me, it's like I, I'm I'm understanding. Yeah, I'm, I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. I'm I give myself the, something to feel. Pain is the body's way. Pain is the greatest motivator of the human experience. There's nothing greater than pain. Desire, um, exaltation, sex. Nothing compares to pain. Pain is is literally designed to move the human, the the, the human machine. And so when. When, we, when we're in pain, we are taught to fear pain, so pain becomes twice as painful when we fear it. That's like when we're working with somebody, like the old massage techniques, elbow into a leg or whatever, if it's too much pain for them in the release, they put their hand there, and then all of a sudden the pain drops by 50%. So acknowledging the pain in, in, any, in any way will take 50% of the pain away. Yeah. And would you say, like, example, right? So people, when people have pain, they try to, like, massage it, and, like, I'm trying to get rid of it, right? But for me, what I've realized is that's you trying to get, you're trying to manipulate the pain to move it. But if you just, like, spend time with it, like, just touch, somatic touch, not I'm going to manipulate this out of, the, like, why won't it be fixed, yeah. right? And so yeah. that's just, just somatic and then now, like, awareness. Especially like, that's more if it's something that, that, that you didn't have pain, now you have pain. You didn't have a rash, now you have a rash. Those are the, those are the body's way of talking to you. And your body's expressing a couple of things. Number one is, if you're like breaking out with rashes, it's like, don't do that to me again. Like, don't put that shit in me. Don't put those chemicals in me. That's what it's yeah. saying. And like, don't, don't put that in me again. And, and when you go, okay, body, I get it. I get it. I'm learning to take care of you better. You know, like I'm, we're working together on this then the body starts to to give you space again that's good it's so it's so interesting 
something because we're really at this time in human consciousness where we have we have the ability to reprogram all of these old ideas like all yeah. of you know yeah, yeah. i mean and that's what fascial maneuvers uh, that's why we do affirmations when we're doing um we're doing organs because what we're doing is the emotions emote is what causes all the action and reaction in us and so we don't have we don't even have a thought before we have an emotion we have a stimulation which creates an emotional response Twitter. which then a narrative a thought tries to explain a result and this, this is where people get it wrong thought so we have to have these emotions first and and the the body is looking when we do the organ reset what we're doing is we're talking to our emotions and that's where the programming happens or when we're in a fascial maneuver or counter rotated the body has a memory of being counter rotated when it was in the fetal position yeah. so that so i'm going back and reprogramming in that spot that's so cool it it really is i mean i mean listen this is my best explanation of trying to explain the experiences that I have and what I see witness in people and to be honest with you nobody 100% knows if that is the truth but that scene that narrative seems to work and seems to fit and there may be a better way of explaining this in the future too and I'm all I'm always open for that um, this is like when people say it's science and it's settled we don't know shit about the human body like we don't know yeah, shit yeah. we pretend we know we don't know anything about it we don't know anything about its capability yeah and even if even by the time that we did figure something out it already changed or it already adapted yeah, equally absolutely, as to the absolutely. <laughs> it's like uh the, the the big one is food if we you know like food is a fuel it's like which food gives you energy and this there's no food that gives you energy food takes away your energy yeah so it's 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 this food will take away less energy than this food but there is no food that gives you energy yeah it's physically impossible your body uses 80 percent of its energy to digest process and eliminate so we've got our whole brains mixed into this thought process which is untrue yeah. so if i think it's giving me energy and i keep eating it oh it's good energy and i hear this with scientists and food scientists all the time yeah that food is good for energy bring up your energy and i'm like how I, how do you know know the science of the body which the body uses energy to to digest and process it and you say it gives you energy yeah it's yeah and i find myself what i what i started to realize is people who are experts dietitians doctors all these different things mm -hmm. it's it's just for me what i realize is just observe what they're saying don't try to prove them wrong and decode them and all these things but like hmm, okay you know what i mean like like I give you permission to your own beliefs you know what i mean and it's that's the challenge that's, oh, that's what i'm learning because I, I do that until they talk to my people and yeah. it's like get your get your stinking beliefs out of my yeah yeah no 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 yeah i i, I get it i mean people are uh, where they're at and you know like um like we're doing a nutrition program right now and and there's a different belief set in that program than i currently believe but i had to go through that journey to get where i am and and it's okay for people to have different beliefs it really is um and and i find that as they move ahead as their body clears up as their trauma clears away what happens is is beliefs start to change yeah, yeah. i mean it did for me and I'm, I'm i mean i i i knew the body pretty good yeah it's so it's like when you release trauma your awareness has to also change so now your belief system from that awareness also is different now it's a choice are you going to adopt your new belief system with your new awareness or are you going to try to use an outdated program with a new awareness system yeah 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 it's it's it, it it's it's a tricky one because a lot of our our beliefs are habitual so yeah. so when something happens i get a stimulus i have a habitual reaction to it like if some if somebody i smell chicken wings i get a habitual reaction my body starts making the chemicals and the bacteria and all that and reprogramming those at the base level that's why things like fasting are so powerful or the 28 day reset yeah like going doing something every morning for 28 days or every afternoon for 28 days changes somebody's life yeah that's why the reset's so powerful and we're day two today we're going to go to day three tomorrow and for those of you guys who are signing up if you haven't if you uh if you you're you're signing up you can get right now for the next couple of days into the first reset or the 
the 28 day reset uh, on the first. And, and so every two weeks we have a global reset starting right now to help people, to give them a chance to, yeah. to have a different perspective. We, what we tried is we went to the same location, same sunrise, same everything, every day for 28 days, and then we changed it for 28 days. It had a completely different impact on us. I can only imagine. It's like maybe we don't know the, the power of environment until we do something consistently every single day and then you do it somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's exactly it. Because the environment programs us. This is what you were saying earlier, having a picture of a sunrise or sunset. That's a programming yeah. mechanism. Yeah. yeah. I think I want to have artwork that comes up and on the walls at nighttime and it, it automatically Pain. shows sun setting. <laughs> Yeah. Then you go outside, you see sun setting. In the morning time, it's sunrise. I think that would be cool. Yeah. That would be super cool. Well, let's go back to what you said about programming. So let's, um, one thing that I've been realizing is people are not programmed to be joyful and happy for long periods of time. I, I, I can attest to that. I, I've, been, uh, I've been the king of that uh, particular statement for most of my life. Okay. Because I, I, so, I never gave myself permission to be happy because I wasn't finished my homework yet. That's my yeah, Capricorn's. I got to do something. I have to account. I have to finish. I have to yeah. do. Like, yeah. I mean, that was that was literally the fashion maneuvers. That was the thing. Now, now I'm letting it go because it's like that was what I came to this planet for was to bring this to the world. Okay. So, like you said, let's just give ourselves permission to be joyful and happy now. Okay. Um, okay. So we're going to stand hand by our side and you know the feeling right before you're about to give somebody a hug so you like you open yourself up you're about to give somebody a hug right you smile you seem like oh my god like you, so i want you to imagine the person that you haven't seen in a long time that you absolutely love and appreciate what you're going to do is you're going to imagine you're seeing themselves for the first time and you're about to give them a hug but the key is, is the person is you so we're going to smile take a deep inhale Open your hands up like you're going to give them a hug. Exhale, let it go. Do the same thing again. Okay? We're going to do it okay. nine times. I get a little awkward once we get to like five or six, but just keep going. Keep trusting it. Here we go. Big smile. About to give them a hug. Inhale. Exhale. Again, bigger. Exhale. Keep going. Think big. Smile. Open those arms up. You're going to give them a big hug. Even bigger, even wider, big smile. These last three with a sigh. So big smile with a sigh. Last two. Last one. One, exhale, give yourself that hug. Now, we're just going to do that same thing. You're giving yourself the hug. Now just smile, and now big sigh three times. And then just wiggle those fingers, wiggle your toes. See how you feel. How was that? That's great. You know, um, uh, before you hug somebody, you get oxytocin. So talking about programming, you're releasing oxytocin. I could, I could literally feel it me coming too. out. It makes too. me want to smile. Me too. <laughs> That's what I was like, the human side. Psyche is so powerful that we can literally create the same experience with just, okay, pretend. You know what I mean? Like Yeah, yeah. Imagining a movement because, the, you know, they, the old thing about, you know, the imagining of the movement and the movement aren't very much alike except for the stimulus that yeah. you get. And when you open up your arms like that, your, your, your body's already preparing. So it doesn't know that it's not seeing somebody to hug. Yeah, yeah. Somebody said fingers feel tight. Why? Well, that's interesting. Fingers feel tight. That means that you're 
uh, all your organs are pulling back power. That's your 10 organs, 10 fingers. So you're opening up emotionally. It's kind of like when you do a drug or something, yeah, and then you stretch. Yeah. But you got some good drug going on there. Yeah. The power of the breath, you get high on your own supply. Yeah. I mean, they, they, there's another one too. It's like people are like, they're talking about, you know, drugs and stuff that makes you high. And I'm like, well, technically, that's not true technically the drugs are stimulating a series of hormone release in your body which you experience is high yeah and if you eat 10 pounds of food and water you eliminate 10 pounds of food and water so yeah. technically there's nothing in that food that that you used other than the signaling to your body and if you yeah. can signal with that you can signal with things like breath yeah there's a lot of different things oh i forgot to i wanted to mention this so real quick for like five ten minutes Talk about the importance of structured water, right? And why breathing in it? Because I go to a place where I do it probably two, three times a week. Now. Yeah, the uh, NLV. That's what I, that's what we use here. Yeah. So what? So what? Well, that, give us a that one. That one is interesting because that's even better than structured water because you can put you can put in a diffuser. You can put in like a level five alkaline water, and um, and then you'll that that moisture will come up and you'll get structured water because. Um, but water begets water, right? So when you're when you're taking it and you're putting it right into your mouth, that's fourth phase of water. What that does is it takes the nano V machine, takes the elements of water between a liquid and a gas, and right before it becomes a gas, it's a smaller molecule. It extracts that smaller molecule, and as you breathe it in, that smaller molecule penetrates the cell. So what it does is it actually penetrates the cell, which is an oxidative process. So it's going after hydroxy radical and, and the hydroxy free radical, which basically when you when you breathe in that water from the nano machine, nano V machine, it's like a janitor cleaning up the floor. Because imagine you come in, you clean all the counters in your place and all that, but you just slog mud through the floor. Well, if a janitor comes in every time you walk through and cleans up the floor after you, then you don't have any mud there. That means that your body can operate more efficiently. And that's what that's what the Nano V does specifically. Yeah. It's it's powerful. It's the only medical device that I recommend. I used to use tachyon and lasers and Tesla coils and all that. Now I now I really know that that true frequency, uh, true true frequency, true light, and true water are the only things that are the only things that I recommend. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. It's because because even after using if after breathing that you i feel higher you know what i mean like i feel more okay, well, aware the reason why you feel higher high is a perception if you take alcohol every day at three glasses you you stop being high or drunk pretty quick and if you take psilocybin every day you stop getting high off the psilocybin you have to keep taking more so it's a perception so the more how you feel that means the more stress your body was in when you when you applied it because what it's doing is is yeah. is your body your body is uh from living comes down and and that stress takes your body down well the gap between your true potential and that spot is that gap is called high that perception is high that's why breath work calms you down really quickly and effective breath work or that's why fascial maneuvers make you feel high yeah, uh, look. One, one thing about this lab, I learn something every every day. <laughs> every day, I'm gonna learn something, something new, and that's why I love it and I appreciate it. So yeah, we tore apart. We tore apart the human experience. Um, you know, I've been doing it for since 2011, tearing it apart. But when I, when the pandemic came, we just sat for two years and did nothing but experiment on our bodies all day, every day for two years with everything you can imagine. And it wasn't just me. I had Jason and Cynthia at the time, and so I could see this is what happens to a female, to a Pisces, this happens to a Sag, who's an Aquarius. This is how they react. And then we had people around us that would come in and out of that experience so we could validate it. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, let's do, um, let's finish off with um, four more exercises. Okay. And then that'll be a, that'll be a good start. So, um, so have you ever taken off a wetsuit? Yes. As a matter of fact, it's one of my least favorite things to do. Right, so, um, dry suits are cool. Wetsuits, it's like... Urgh. So 
I hate constriction. Right. So that's what we're gonna do. So when we when we take an inhale, we're in the wetsuit. When we exhale, we have to get this wetsuit off of us. So it's really tight, and you have to like really stretch yourself and then exhale the air. Okay. Okay. So we're just gonna do six of those. Really, what I invite people to do is to really go inside of themselves and imagine they're taking off different parts. So arm at a time, leg at a time. If you've yeah, never got one off, it's okay. Just imagine you're in saran wrap. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do six of those, and then I got the next one after that. So here we go. Inhale, nice and big. Exhale, take it off. And again, even bigger. Really go up, and really let it go. Four more, take it in, take it off. Here we go, last three, take it off. Two more, take it off. Last one, and take it off. Yeah, I could, I could feel myself on the edge of a, a boat scuba diving, taking off that wetsuit. Because um, my dad, when we were younger, I started diving when I was four years old. So I had a wetsuit when he had a dry suit. And I'm like, all the cool kids had a dry suit. I had a wetsuit. I said, hey, taking that sucker off. So what's the difference? What's the main difference? Um, the wetsuit brings water in, so your body heats the water. The dry suit seals you at the edges, and it becomes inflatable. So you can wear clothes underneath your dry suit. And, um, and when you're on a boat, and you've been diving in the ocean, the Pacific Ocean, especially North Pacific, and it's cold, and you got to take that thing off, and it's cold on the boat, it's, it's like... like it's not fun. It's not fun. It's not fun. And then, no, what's worse is, is putting it back on. So you pour hot water in it, then you put it back on. Yeah, all those little things. I, I grew up scuba diving. I mean, I really appreciate all the time I had scuba diving because uh, scuba diving is uh, learning about pressure in the body is what actually I, I learned the physics of the body through the eyes of pressure. When I was 13 years old, I I wrote a physics exam that allowed me to be a scuba diver and you had to have the cal calculations in the tables and so that's the only way that i that was my lens for how the body worked so i didn't go to school for anatomy and look at the muscles i knew muscles from working out but i always would think pressure and yeah. now because that's, that's your earliest correlation is all about yeah. pressure yeah that's so cool that's so so cool it's like it's like so cool because it's like you were programmed to be where you are now based on that scuba diving you know what i mean like your soul called in those types of experiences i to that that's what i'm saying right now we all do that we just don't know it that's why when we call in the experience you're like i hate this person i hate this i this is not nice yeah i i can i can get that these experiences aren't nice especially physical ones in your body or relationships and all that but now that I, I know the astrology so well, I, I even know when I brought it in or when I'm going to bring it in. I know what it's about. Like when it comes through the door right now, like I know what it's about. Like yeah. it's, it's, not, it's not fooling me. It's like it's like the debt collectors coming. Yeah. I know. Now it's now it's not the debt collectors. It's their they're coming to to bring to bring to bring gifts and, yeah. and treasures. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but the three the three but wise the thing men are is, coming. Is, you you went through every experience in your life to get where you were at and and we all do that and and we don't even we don't even ra rationalize these experiences till our saturn return at 30. i'd say i'm at the beginning of that it's it's like things are becoming more obvious as to why but i haven't fully understood the other side yet so well you're born into a generation that's bringing in the change my there, there's a few people in my generation that are like the spearhead for that change, and I'm one of the spearheads. I'm just a, I'm just a, 
a, a pointy end of a piece of a uh, piece of rock <laughs> carved out. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to go through the wall. Yeah. Not a lot of intelligence in it. Just sharp and pointy and and fired a high velocity at something. That's me. Yeah. And and your generation is supposed to bring in that change. You're not supposed to is bringing in the change. Yeah, it's true. That's why that's why I love being around older people that are actually not even older people, people with more experience who have the willingness to like lead the charge. You know what I mean? Like those are the people I, I, I know your I know your astrology. You got all the experience you need. You're just remembering it. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that's what it is. Is that you guys and you guys get a chance to remember because it's okay to think about it that way. When I was brought up, it's like you're a meat suit. You know, you're born, you have you have stuff that, that ignites there was a big bang and that was it there was nothing else in the universe and you're gonna die and when you die it's all done yeah. you know and, and that's you know that's the that's the container that i grew up in and then then it's like religion came in it's like yeah you'll live happily forever if you follow all these rules but if you break one of them even one of them even in you're your thoughts hell forever. you're going to hell you're going to hell son yeah you can't 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 tell you how many times i heard that as a kid growing up right that's crazy bro yeah, somebody said, uh, I heard Sagittarius are the unicorns now. Yes, Sagittarius are the unicorns. We are the unicorns now. We're the ones with the pointy beaks going through. Yeah. All Sagittariuses became unicorns. Capricorns became the salespeople, all you Capricorns out there. Yeah, Capricorns who never like to sell, they're the salespeople for the new age. That's so interesting. The Aquariuses that are that are like uh that have always been contrarian they're looking around they're like how come everybody's doing what i'm doing now <laughs> you got they're not contrarians up. anymore yeah. yeah yeah all right well let's finish off with these last two and see what we'll see how we feel so we're gonna bring our hands in we're gonna clasp them together and what we're gonna do we're gonna inhale all the way as tall as we can when we exhale we're trying to open this, ourselves up as wide as we can Yep, so every breath, try to grow taller. Every exhale, try to grow wider. And all the way out. Good job, go taller. And really wide. Last three, taller. And really wide. Last two, really tall. And really wide. Best one. And really, really wide. Good. Sun's coming out. That's what I love about tropical storms. Yeah. All right. So the last one. Let's see what anybody got to say. Anybody? Oh, somebody earlier said something about face. So we'll go to our face. So what I want you to imagine is we're we're breaking through or breaking past who we thought we were. So all we have to do is just lift ourselves up. So all we're gonna do is put our hand on our side of our head. When we inhale, we're just gonna do nice, gentle, lift our head up, breathe as tall as you can, exhale, let go, okay? We're gonna do it six times, then we're gonna put our hands on our hips, same exact thing. Here we go, lift up tall, and release. Lift yourself up taller, Release. Even taller. Release. Best three. Release. Two more. Release. Last one and release. 
and then hands on your hips whenever you're ready just three breaths every exhale get yourself into your body into this moment two more expand your diaphragm last one And then finish with your hands above your head. Tell yourself, great job. I did it. Great job, Gary. I did it. And that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> so when you run workshops, what does a workshop look like? A workshop? Um, it depends. Are we talking multiple days, one day? Um, well, I mean, what? Hey, what, what kind of what kind of workshops do you do? Do you do them online still? Yes. Yeah. So right. So tomorrow I'm actually doing one at Lululemon Mall of America. So in their um, little studio, I'll be doing a breakthrough. But Mall, mall of America, yeah. largest mall, largest mall in the world. Yeah. Not anymore. I think. But yeah, it, it's it, it is insane though. What I can say is it yeah. is insane. It's crazy. So you're doing a, a one day workshop there. Yeah, so that's tomorrow. And basically, it's just about, it's just theme. So tomorrow's about breakthrough. So breakthrough for me is about the internal process of going, accepting certain things and letting go. And through that process, you've broken through. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, um, But for me, it's, it's, it's kind of weird because it's like, I have a plan, but then the plan kind of is like, over here, do I need the plan or do I just trust how I feel or what I'm yeah. doing? So it's yeah, that's what that's what we do. And it's you know what I mean. You frame out the plan and then and it gives you a kind of ingredient list and then you just go in there and, yeah. and do it. Yeah. You know yeah. what I what I learned is that if I do it for me, it works for everybody. If I do it for them, it doesn't work for half the people. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. Because for me, like while we're doing this. It's like, where do I feel? Where, where is, or like, it's like spontaneous awareness. Like, well, you, you know, but the also too is that, um, you know, you're also very aware of this. You're, uh, you're a grandmaster and your son, son as well. Yeah. And you, you're born to feel the world and, and, and those who focus on it get an extra sensory of what the world is. And whether I'm talking to somebody online or in person, I can feel them. And if I do what I feel, cause that's for me. And it's also for the, for me. That's the other thing that I realized is that is that you know like people, it's like their energy, their problem, or whatever. If they're showing up in their life, there's some version of that that that's that's for me. Yep. That's and that's the that's that's why for me this has been the teacher. So I'm learning while doing this because it's like okay, did that work or that like it's almost like a it's a it's like a mirror effect that happens instant, and you're just trying things on yourself for somebody else but it's really for your you know what i mean yeah it's it's the ultimate yo-yo that's how i see it it's yeah like, it is if you throw it down it comes it will you throw it down to, to truly embody something and and to learn it you have to teach it so if i'm experiencing communicating getting feedback that's the whole process that's actually how it works people want to they want to go experience get everything, get it perfect, and then teach it. And I'm like, that's not how it works. You don't, you don't learn until you share it. Yeah. And it doesn't become a part of you. Otherwise, it's just something you're sharing out of your head. Yeah. And that's, that's um, one thing that Rob Earth shared. He was like, I was like, what's your favorite quote or saying? And he was like, learn, on, learn how to fly on the way down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and, yeah, and, I love that. And, I love that. That's a, yeah. that's, the challenge. I don't know very many people who are willing to jump out of the nest and learn how to fly. Yeah, that, that's way. totally me. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure it out. I know I'm not going to die, so I'll figure it out at least. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome, uh, Isaiah. It's been Thank great uh, you having so you much. here again today. I look forward to next week. I'm enjoying right. our sessions quite a bit. Thank you so much, Gary. I'll talk to you soon. Hey, thank you for all you do to help people. Yes, sir. You too, man. Okay. Peace. Breath Messiah. If you haven't done it yet, go follow him. And if you can get to one of his workshops, do one of his workshops, man. Uh, if you're anywhere near Mall of America tomorrow, go to Wall of America. Well, yeah, I, yeah.
Yeah, here it is. I'm telling you, you go to the mall because there's a breathwork session there. Yeah. So what are you guys feeling after that? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. Let me know where we're going to take this the rest of the day. And again, um, we are looking to do uh, uh, open events in Los Angeles area. I'm thinking I'm leaning more towards Orange County, by the way, um, just outside of LA. It's an hour. Um, and uh, we're looking to do it in Austin, Texas. Uh, we're looking to do something in New York and something in Florida. And we haven't nailed down dates yet. We haven't nailed down places. And thank you for those of you guys who have responded. We're looking for people that have major influence that are willing to work with us. They can help us, uh, help direct us in venue location as one thing, um, or at least give us to the right people. And the other part too is to collaborate with them to bring more people. This is not about uh, human garage. This is about helping people. And the way we help people is we get in front of them. And who do we want to get in front of? We want to get in front of new people. We'll see your Temecula, please. Yes, yeah, somebody's saying that. Yeah, but even if we do do it in LA, it's only a drive away. <laughs> uh come to portugal yes we will be in portugal yes we are we're heading out that way um but we are getting ready with some uh north american tours and the other thing about north america too is that we get to bring supplements there and we get to bring shirts and we get to bring other other paraphernalia and stuff like that which helps us fund our mission too and and we're really moving into into foreign territories this year going into new markets i may have have a, a, a venue Venue has to be, depending on where you are, venue has to be, I'd say 5,000 people has to be, that has to be there. And here's one of the things that, here's one of the reasons why I was leaning away from Los Angeles is I don't, I, I'm asking people to take off their shoes. So I don't want to be in, I don't want to be where they put chemicals on the grass or wherever like that. That's just counterintuitive. <clears throat> Crystal River and Three Sisters Springs. Uh, are so bright in Florida. Uh, the other, the other thing is, it has to have a large base of people. So, like, we're not looking to go to a unique place to get people to drive. We're looking to go to people this time. Um, and what I mean by that is, we're looking to be like in. We would go to Orange County because that still is, you know, millions and millions of people uh, around the draw base of LA. Uh -huh. and, and again, we're looking. Yeah, somebody says everybody's like, oh, see, it'd be better, great. Uh, if we come to LA, you're coming anyways. It doesn't matter where we go. Uh, but yeah, Orange County probably has more open spaces that we can work with. Uh, Toronto. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's a group in Toronto. Toronto's a, Toronto's a place that's getting our attention, starting to. The more people you guys have, we're going to where the numbers are. Again, it's about people. Okay. Um, uh, Mohit. May Mera Mo, Mohit Mera <laughs> Anna Maria Island, Florida. Don't know where that is. Can I fly out for healing session? No, actually, we do not do sessions. Um, yeah, I mean, just honestly think about it. Uh, with millions of 20 million people around the world, three and a half million people online, and millions in other spots, what do you think the chances of us having time if we opened it up for sessions? We do do some work with people that you'll see from time to time. Again, that's usually with our lifestyle artist people that have worked through the programs or are already helping people. So we help people that are helping them. And, and the other thing that we do is sometimes when we have a media partner, Mike Bledsoe just popped up with Mike Salami. Hey, Mike Bledsoe, I'm gonna be talking to you later on today. And that's a blast from the past. Okay, I tried to uh, Mohit Mahra, not able to join. Sixty. Uh, that looks like uh, Nick Vanderpool. <clears throat> Let's try that. Yeah, but you can work with. Hi there. Hi. How do I say your first name? Martina, I'm Inika, actually. Inika? My name is Inika. Hi, Inika. How Hi. are you? Where are you located, Inika? Uh, I live in uh, Algarve, Portugal. Portugal? Uh, oh, or Portugal? Yeah. yeah. I can see you. Let me see. Oh, sometimes that happens.
happens. Okay. Sometimes it happens. So you're just talking to me now. So just pretend yeah. you're looking at it. So it'll look normal on our end. <laughs> oh, I did not expect to be chosen, but uh, I have to say um, I just finished the 28 um, day reset uh, yesterday, and now I start with the global one. So That's awesome. I so what yeah. so what changed for you through the reset what were some of the biggest uh, things um that i i feel my body more and more and i it, i feel it's changing and it feels like i'm a, a big sack and everything is moving in the sack yeah. it's really weird that's awesome and <laughs> when, when's your birthday i'm 22 of august um 1968 Oh, do you know if you are a zero degree uh, or a 29 degree? Are you a 29 degree Leo, Libra or, or sorry, 29 degree Leo or a zero degree Virgo? I'm a 29 Leo. Okay. okay, well then you need to contact me, take a screenshot of your picture, uh, of your chart and yeah. uh, go to astro.com, send it to me in the DMs. Um, I have a group of 29 degrees that that we meet yeah that I, would way. Love, I would love to join <laughs> okay so yes yeah, you just take us go to astro.com take a screenshot then send it in say gary asked me to send this from the live they'll send it to me and yeah. oh i'm just going to make this qualifier for everybody else if you're just sending your charts for me to look at there's no way i can do that anymore there's hundreds of them so unless i'm asking you don't bother sending it so yeah send it in to me and and i'll introduce you into a group we have a meeting coming this saturday yeah. uh, i want to say i'm a massage therapist and uh, i'm so excited um, how what you say about the human body because i always felt that uh, um, it has to do something with breathing and um yeah how i do it it's it looks very similar of how you see the the body so i'm I have really something from, ah, oh, I finally somebody who know how it works and uh, I'm very excited to do more. I just started also the the Lifestyle Artist Program and, Congrats. uh, Congratulations. Yeah. And by the yeah, way, and we, um, uh, if you look on our website under the uh, Fundamentals of Fascia and if you, and the Lifestyle Artist Program, you, once you're done level one, you have access to all the old videos, you'll see a whole section of level two training of table work so but you can start off with the fundamentals of fascia and you'll see me working on the table with people implement those in your massage sessions you'll, you'll find that you'll find yeah. that people you you probably already are but you'll find that people have pretty wild experiences yes yeah but it's also they have to be willing to you have to be ready i know yes yeah. you have to be old. yeah but there's things that you can do like like the belly button torque uh, you can do yeah. that while they're sheeted, you know, while they're covered. Um, the other one, when they're laying on their stomach, you can go on their calves and you can put both hands on your calves and put all your weight and push forward. Yeah. Hold that there for three minutes. It'll yeah. knock them out. It, it'll like put them to sleep. Like they'll go into a trance state. And mm -hmm. then from there, their whole body is really, really re uh, receptive. And then okay, here's another one for you the um the fascial coffee yeah which is yeah so if you only massage in that direction yes on each limb i already hold, tried to do that uh, i already do that yeah I, yeah yeah you get a d completely different response from people yeah yes okay thank yeah you. And, yeah that's awesome yeah and uh, you know thank you for doing all that you do to help people i mean yeah you know i love how long have you I been think in there it's my purpose now i found i found you and now i know what to do with my life i'm i'm going your direction too so it's thank you i'm glad you are me. well you're a 29 degree you're you're basically coming in at the last minute yeah <laughs> yeah <Always. laughs> for you everything is last minute it yeah. always works out and you always stress about it all the way up to the last minute yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh so i'm, I'm look super excited about seeing you in the lifestyle artist program Thank and you. and I'm curious now, since you've done the 28 day, the old one and the new one together, I'm curious to know how what you see is different. Yeah, I can. I have to say that uh, <clears throat> I 
didn't use the the magnesium bed a lot because I didn't have a bed and <clears throat> I did well, sometimes with oil and then shower and I, I really had to improvise it, a lot of things but now um, I also follow the serious joy and I <clears throat> noticed that um, what do I want to say um, uh, I really like the 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 way the with the plan is, and that you had to um, make some decisions. And I was really struggling with uh, my relationship. And when I hear you talking, I, and I th it's, and that's when I ended my relationship because I was not doing what I wanted to do. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for you, for you, it's about learning to follow your heart. Yes. Yeah, and that's been the journey. That's why, it, you know, like being a 29 degree Leo, I mean, it's got to be, I mean, for me, following my heart was hard. So, yes. so I can't even imagine being a 29 degree Leo because you have to, you, you, your whole life's purpose is to follow your heart and you don't figure it out until well into your life. Yes, you're right. So it's, now it's me time. I have to, I feel I have some issues. I'm still strong because I always was strong and I was very physical at work, always moving. Thank God I have very physical work. So, but I notice my body is uh, getting tired and that's why I also want to do the reset and to get all the toxins out yeah. and that things. It, it'll happen so, uh, fast. It'll happen fast. So I ordered your uh, supplements and they come it's it's a way over the sea but uh, yeah it will come and uh, yeah i will i'm um, curious how it is because uh, now i'm going to do the bath i have an, another uh, place to stay and there, there there is a bath so i'm going to do the baths every every evening and now i'm gonna i think i see a lot of difference because in the the first 28 d uh, reset i didn't do it and i think it's a very good extra thing to add the best. Yeah, yeah, it makes a big difference. Um, yeah, and when people, like, I even tell people, if you go get one of those portable baths or whatever, it does make a difference. It really does. Yeah. Um, I, I, when I'm down in Mexico, I don't have a bath in my suite, and but I'm in the ocean every day. But I notice a difference because when I'm back up in Canada, I bath three, four times a day. Mm -hmm. I know, I do notice a difference. So I'm getting a, I'm getting a tub here come hell or high water, but it makes a difference. Okay, we'll see. I'm uh, very excited. Uh, so. I'm really happy to meet you. I look forward to uh, you sending me the DM with your with your astrology chart and then I'll invite you to the group, okay? Yes, thank you. I do. Okay, bye, see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. What do you clean the bathtub with? Um, that's a good, good one. I mean, we use uh, uh, we use natural cleaners and we use acid water from our Alcaviva machine. I listen. You're gonna say you'll save a lot of money if you get you get two things. You get laundry magnets. Um, you'll save yeah, usually somewhere between six and two thousand six hundred and two thousand dollars per month, depending if your family or not on on soaps that you used to use in your in your washing machine. You no longer need. And the other thing too is um uh, if you um if you use the alcaviva water for cleaning you spray bottles stuff like that you don't have any of the chemicals you're not wiping it away and again you save a ton of money on that stuff you save a couple thousand dollars a year by using laundry magnets and by using the alcaviva water pays pays for itself right away and the laundry magnets by the way are only like 80 bucks canadian or us something like that somebody's asking about uh, groups for Leo, we are we are going to have a group, but not by astrological sign, by number of your sign. Um, I have found in my personal experience that if you are a 14 degree and another 14 degree and their sun sign comes along, you have instant relationship. It doesn't matter if, if you are a Leo and a Leo, you can be completely different. And so, uh, um, so the the these uh, this group that I've been experimenting with for about a year now is 29 degrees and zeros those are the two ends of mastery come together um because 29 starts over and starts back at zero 
And so we will have it. We will. We'll be migrating that group to our platform um, once right once we get through the resets um, and things calm down a bit. And then we'll be putting down uh, a, a group for every degree: 28, 27, 26, 25, 24. And it's degree of the sun sign because at all of it, it has to come through there. You think about you. You're made up of these 12 primary components and these 20 roughly components. And they all are expressing themselves through whatever your sun sign is. They can join my 25 group. There's a 25 degree group right now. Lisa has, you can, you can message her if you're 25 degree in your sun sign. My birthday is October 31st. I have 25 degree. Oh, there's Lisa. Yeah, 25 degree group. Yeah, so we're going to be putting all those on the platforms um, because I want those to be, like, I, I don't want, like, for example, it's not my group. I just put it together and I want these people to, start communicating and it's starting to happen. They're starting to help each other out. They understand each other. You think mind. How do you find out your number? Go to um, astro.com and put it. Are you a 29 uh, mermaid disco? Are you a 29 degree Virgo in your sun sign? If you are, then message me with that astro.com chart. And if you're a 20, 28 or 27 guys it, there's no slag or there's no anything about it it's just we're looking to we're 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 monitoring a behavior set and it just only works if people in there have that petra oh, oh petra you're a zero degree in your sun sign well then message me with a copy of your chart i've seen your chart but I, there's way too many okay Let's see here. Healing mind. Okay. Hey, Tom. Let's say let's check in with you, Tom. Let's see how's it going. Healing mind forty one. Unable to join. My guess is. Hey, Tom. Hi, Gary. How are you? Doing fantastic. How are you? All right. I, I forgot to ask something last week that's really important in moving forward with uh, maneuvers, and and then it came up this week, but. Um, and I took notes because I want to stay conscious here. Um, so, as I told you last time, I had a detached retina three months yeah. ago. And, uh, you know, I went in three last week, two weeks ago, and he said, it's looking great. So he kind of gave me permission to do anything. I even asked him, can I pressurize, you know, breathe? And he said, sure. Um, so having said that, I went into my chiropractor who I was telling you about, who's a gifted soul. And uh, she was working my neck just stretching it, just working around the neck and doing what she normally does to try to get some movement and stretch in my neck because I hold a lot of tension. Um, as you probably remember, I'm the guy who yeah. had that bird trauma. Yeah. And I, I used to clinch my teeth, my brother said, who shared a room with me at two years old, I was clinching my teeth. So there's a lot of struggle going on early on, but a lot of tension in my head. When she was working in the neck, um, I just dropped into that panic that I've shared with you, that visceral terror, and it's really stayed with me. And I kept doing the maneuvers all last week really well. I did the one day, three day, and almost made it through the seven day when I started getting spasms in the in the neck. Really, a lot of pain coming up. You no, know, it's probably psychological and emotional, but it, it, it is. Yeah, it is. I get, it is, it's and, a, and it's a balance ahead. between your body being ready and you being emotionally ready. Mm. And, and it has a lot to do with the direction in your life, which way you're going. Mm -hmm. So you're coming up with that feeling right now. It's like today's a day for you because you're a Capricorn. Today's a day for you where there's some decision process that you're making today, something that you're deciding upon. Do you know what it is or? I've been doing a lot of journaling over the last couple of days and I listened to all the, to the, uh, to astrology essay and your session and i think it has to do with my work bringing my work much more into the world but it also has to do with my my body and how i approach life um in terms of often living out of fear instead of living there it from is. my that, my that's path. it that's it i got it right in the neck that's what it is it's it's basically you're making a decision to no longer live in mm -hmm. fear and and the way that you'll know that you've made that decision is that you think differently starting tomorrow or today and and 
and and your heart doesn't want to live out of fear that's why it's a heart-based decision and when you and so you know part of it is is even even the way that you're talking about going to the chiropractor and having this and then it comes up it's coming up to bring up that fear for you to say it's going to be okay everything's going to work out because the other way of doing it is there's a problem something's going wrong i got to protect myself yeah you know it's a it's a challenge I'm watching the words I use, and thank you for all the. I've been watching. Yesterday was a very powerful couple hours you had with folks. Um, the challenge that's coming up in my body is that it's really a sick to my stomach feeling when it comes up. It's pretty. Uh, I can deal with a lot of emotional discomfort, not always physical, but emotional. I can deal with, but it's it's a it's an edge of terror, um, as I've told you, and it's I'm weaning off clozapine. Never did pharmaceuticals most of my life, but I did get back on it when I had this surgery so I could sleep. Weaning off of that, watching what clozapine does at night, I'm in the terror, take it, it obviously works on my amygdala yeah. or my lymph system, but boy, does it send me to a place of feeling myself again, and I'm not advocating it. Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. It, it, it gives you space, you know, you know, like, I have, I don't, I'm not against drugs, I basically, Basically, we eat food. I don't believe we were designed to eat food as human beings. So after food, food is the drug. After food, anything else that you need to medicate or to work through it or feel good in your body is okay because we're already eating the one thing that has the most disruption in our nervous system. It stops us from producing stem cells. So there's nothing more disruptive than food. That's so a hard one when you say that. I'm now learning and taking in and more curious about urine. That first, I'm always curious and stay open. And okay. I value. Okay, so here, here's one that you'll get. Well, wait, one a good second. friend of mine. Okay, let, let me. Oh yeah, okay. I just okay, go ahead. I value. I'm so aligned with most of what you share that even when you bring up something that my brain can't jump on, I I want to get me curious because you come from such a heart based position that you. So I'm very curious now about your and learn more in the last yeah. week. The food part, I still logically think, no, oh, I have a stomach. My whole digestive tract is there. It, my evolution must want me to eat. You, you will. It, we have evolved to eat. There's no doubt about that. Mm. But when there's no food in our stomach, we know the science. We start going into autophagy, and then we start producing stem cells. So healing happens when we don't eat. So what is the opposite of healing? Not healing. Why would our bodies develop a stomach then? And well, just... the stomach, well, I mean, we're using it for something that you think, which is to eat, but stomach is desire. It's an emotion. All of your organs have emotions. Mm -hmm. So what happens is when I keep them busy eating food, I lose the intent of the actual organ itself. But there's some things that led me to believe this. And, you know, like number one is, my own experience because i believed in eating food my whole life i mean obviously i had but you know my sister was a big faster and she's trying to get me to fast so when i started fasting and i realized that number one i didn't lose weight when i fasted which was crazy like i was fat at the end of 44 days and and i mean legitimately fat at the end of 44 days so then so then i had to ask myself the greater question like what is it that's really happening here and then i have all these other inputs like the doctor who you know, they try to starve in Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other, the other one who, um, who got locked in a, um, in a container uh, that Ra talked about the other day, in a refrigeration container that wasn't turned on and believed it was turned on mm -hmm. and died of freezing. So the power of, of what we believe, it supersedes all physical action on the body. And, and, and the other part, too, is that when you take a look and you look at anatomy books, you've got this greater momentum here. It looks like this well-formed organ, but when you do an autopsy and you do a dissection, it doesn't look like that. It looks like a scab. It looks like a scab that goes that goes all the way here and all, mm -hmm. all the way here. That's what it does. It looks like a scab, and that makes more sense to me. But the simple fact is this: science science has validated that when we don't eat for a period of time, our body produces stem cells. It runs. It does not run on sugar, it runs on ketones. Mm. 
Sugar causes hormonal disruption, which ages us and causes us to burn of energy. Mm -hmm. So we're just addicted to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when we're so if that's what happens when we're if we if we're producing stem cells, which can craft themselves into anything that the body needs, then the opposite is I'm eating and I'm not producing them. So one of them is healing my body. One of them is not allowing my body to heal. End of story. And what are we healing from? Our environment. Hmm. Yeah, that's a big one. It's a big one. Like, like I've been wrestling with this for a long time. But what happened for me by the third week of the fast, I was angry at the world because I knew I had been tricked. And and, hmm. and anybody who fasts for a month or more, twenty eight days or more, will immediately have this realization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you the fasting is really. I mean, that part has become. I'm, I'm going to take this in stages for myself. And really uh, do the 28 day reset. Then you know, not yeah. jump. There's a part of me that's always gung ho to do everything at once. <laughs> but I'm gonna. I'm really open to fasting, and you you've opened my eyes, and the folks on this call have too. The, the power of that, and I am grateful for that because that's uh, yeah. Just I'm I'm on that. I guess I want your support. I just want your feedback because um, doing the maneuvers with my eyes so my left eye my good eye or my eye that's functional the non-surgical eye is now having some vision issues which i'm sure has to do with stress and emotions yeah more than anything. but fear 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 but it does wig me out because that's a vulnerable it was a vulnerable three months of not seeing well because your sight at least my sight is my connection to the world but you got through it right say it again you got through it. i did i did so 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 if it happened again as scary as it would be, you'd still get through it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, not I, pleasant. Like, I don't want to go back to jail. I don't want to go back to prison. I don't want to be in solitary confinement. But if I had to be there, the fear of it has gone. For you, yeah, the fear. I mean, I did make it through, and it's good to be reminded. I think that's a big thing for me to be reminded and continue to remind myself that I made through with things. It's... Um, I guess the the worry is with the maneuvers. What I've been noticing with the maneuvers and breathing is just there's more intensity around the eye. Yeah, um, and that's okay. I, is that, that, it seems normal. Yeah. My my intuition says it's probably okay. Yeah, yeah. Intensity. I mean, you're not you're not doing anything. You can't hurt yourself with a fascial maneuver. The, the intensity I, I is anything couldn't hurt the the uh, retina or anything or. Cornea. You'd have to do a lot of you. Know, it wouldn't be a fascial maneuver to do it. I mean, I mean, you could you could create. If you had a pressure injury in your eye, it's because there's too much compression of the fascia around the head. So just keep doing the fascia all around the head, the ears, the jaw, the ear pull, the jaw release. That one there for the back of the neck, the upper reset protocol. Um, getting in the nose, blowing it up, and doing maneuvers like creating pressure in there um anything to create pressure and because you know here i can move my skin around and and create friction yeah. which lets the layers of fascia up here it's around a hard bony surface so it's a little so you have to do more twisting and stuff like that and but pressure in the skull creating pressure in the skull is a good thing to release pressure in the skull is that what you're saying yeah but but there's a way there's a healthy way to do it. You're relieving because you're doing all the outside work. Like one, there's a C-section release, which you could mm -hmm. do. It's it's more than just a C-section. Most people have a very stuck uh, uh, cranial uh, frontal frontal bone. Yeah. That cranial bone up there gets stuck. So pulling it apart in the C-section release and stuff like that, it creates more expansion capability. That's what you're looking for is expansion. Yeah. So doing the, the upper reset, any of the head stuff. Um... And do, do the... Do the uh, do the C-section release. If you can't find it, just DM us and we'll send it to you. I, I thought, no, I saw it online. I, I'll do that. Um, but keep going. It's not the, the left eye and its uh, focusing issues um, it is not. And, and I often feel tightness under the eyes. I don't know if you've ever experienced yeah. that. The yeah. So that's coming from back here. Oh, really? Yeah, so stretching back there. Like grab your ear, twist it. Pull the skin, move it around, grab your hair, pull it up. Oh, you got enough hair back, back there. <laughs> grab your hair, 
pull it a little bit, yeah. move it around. Uh, when you do anti gravity, you know what you can yeah. do is you can pull your hands apart and like pull, stretch the skin, pull it apart, then do it. So like, so pulling it apart when you do yep. it, um, any of those things? Yeah, great. Those are great suggestions. You, I'm just looking at this list. Uh, do you, uh, you were talking about your vision. Do you have any suggestions? Yep. And I've, I'm going to be doing I've, a vision rebuilding program. So um, there's two, two components to vision. One of them is the ability for the eye to focus, like the retina to change shape. And you see my, my face changing shape. Mm -hmm. So, because I was really, really, really tight in this eye and it was pulled up and tight. And that's because over time my face had been torquing. Well, that then took away the ability because it's like, it's like pulling, pulling here. It's like, imagine that's this, the fascia pulling here and the eye is trying to change shape and the muscles can't move. That's one aspect. The other one is how the brain interprets it, the signal. Um, there's a vision program. Um, I'm, we're trying trying to reach out to them. I don't know where they're at right now, somewhere in our system where they, they train the kids to read with blackout. They put blinders on and they train them mm -hmm. to read. And then they train them to play, play sports with blinders on because the eyes are just interpreting energy. And you know, when somebody catches a ball like that and doesn't even look, that's interpreting energy coming at them and then moving. That's their internal eyes moving to that spot. So technically, I don't want to become dependent upon my eyes again like I have today. I want my all my senses to process and for me to know where stuff is mm -hmm. and then use my eyes as a secondary mechanism. And that's where I'm going. I'm not because I could go do the eye exercises and probably ditch these within a matter of matter of 30 days or less. Um, but I'm I'm op I'm opening myself up for a greater way of seeing. And I watch these kids play. Uh, tennis, ping pong, and basketball blindfolded, and really, yeah, and and I'm I'm I don't mean just kind of feeling way around, fully playing these sports, and reading, and I'm like, okay, if they can do it, I can do it. I want to do that, and they have a program that they teach you to do that. If anybody knows who I'm talking about, this company, have them. If you could know them, have them reach out to us. We've already tried reaching out. Are you talking? They're looking through pinholes, or they're looking? They're not. Seeing no, anything? no, they don't. See anything it's complete blinders how can you they teach them to read interpret the energy another way wow yeah so i'm that's where i'm going with it yeah like i don't care about, about this i mean literally i could program myself these are just magnifiers and this just makes it easy i look at it i'm looking at a small screen a, an exorbitantly long period of time which is not exactly healthy and i'm doing it right now for a period of time which i won't be doing for much longer so mm -hmm. so i'm using this just to make it easier i don't i don't i i do not believe in changing focus like getting getting prescriptives because it makes one eye lazier than the other and then that also offsets the shoulders the hips the motion everything like mm. that mm. yeah we were we were sold a bill of goods the american society of optometrists has a vision and improvement program i bought years ago and and it helps you rebuild your vision and it was a basically it was a guy who wanted to become a fighter pilot and couldn't become a navy fighter pilot because of his vision so he he went and and found this program that was pers that was a prescribed endorsed program by the american society of ophthalmologists and that no one ever ever did anything about because this is where the money is so he went and he he made that program out available to people and he gave them simple little eye patch, gave them a little eye patch and little exercises and 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 things to do exercises to rebuild your vision and i'm like and i'm and it works because i because what happened when it first started doing it i rebuilt my vision and i didn't use these for a long time but what but i what i'm i believe my body's leading me to is this new way of of looking at it i want to be able to read and see without using my eyes mm. yeah, i like that it has to do with feeling really trusting the energy that's around you or in front of you and uh going deeper there's a feels uh feels like an edge of growth deep growth to be able to do that to give up relying on your eyes solely and go deeper in the feeling yeah. i mean we we do do this instinctively mm -hmm. it's like when you go and you catch something like your eyes did 
didn't coordinate that movement. So, you know, the mechanism that allows us to do that is just a superpower that's been squished down. Well, it's, intuition is very much uh, feeling power too. Yes. Um, do you, uh, this is something I think just, a, I know you got a lot on your plate, but you know, vision is a big, my, my acupuncturist talks to me about, he's been working on me in terms of the liver um, the liver he, in Chinese medicine is very connected to the so eyes, according to the and Here. bladder. Yeah. And the big ones for me. So, um, you know, working on those. But I think this, this area is a big one in terms of speaking. Yeah, people. yeah that's, why I, that's why I'm going through it. I, I, I just don't, I don't believe that if we have superpowers coming up, which I believe we do, the human, if the human species is evolving, I mean, heck, we have dogs having conscience. If, if you want to see... Go on TikTok and look at I Am Bunny and watch this dog have conscious contemplations, not near jerk reactions like I want food, like questioning his own or her own existence, um, questioning, um, you know, and, and sensing people coming and stuff like this. And, and so this is a conscious shift that I've been watching for a long time. We got the lion laying with, uh, we got the leopard laying with the cow now. And these are also talked about biblically. So consciousness is rising. That means all consciousness rises. But we are so habituated into believing that this is the way it is. People are having a, a sixth sense that they never knew. People are having intuition that they didn't know. That's just the beginning of it. And I'm into exploring what we can do with these machines. I'm not going backwards. I'm going forward. Mm, I like that. I like that. Would you, uh, let me just make sure. I, would you, uh, um, two, two things. I, I think around, around this, any coaching, you gave it to me earlier, but I want to solidify it because these next two days are really important for us all. But first of all, I'm just going to take, affirm what I've heard because there's that fear that I'm going to trust that I'll doing all the maneuvers and creating pressure and breathing deeply is not going to affect my eye. And, it, and if anything, it's going to help it. That's my, 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 what I want to believe. Yeah. Would you say that? Yeah, that, that's very, very true because that pressure exists through constriction. Removing constriction improves human performance. Like it. And if, is there any, any insight just around the earlier part of when you said bingo of the big decision, I'm not going to live from fear. Obviously, what I want to live from is more a sense of my passion and my um, my reason I'm here on this planet, my gifts. Well, that's share them. that. That's one. You know, one way to make a decision is to stop questioning alternatives. Say more. It's like, but, it's like, well, maybe this will happen, or maybe I go over here, or maybe I do that. One way to make a decision is to stop looking at alternatives. So, you, you mean alternatives? Like the, what the brain does in terms of worry, you mean, or yeah. alternatives? Yeah, but it's like, uh, right? It's like I don't know what to do. I, well, I could go this way, or I could go these four other ways. One way to make a decision is to stop thinking about the other four ways. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You're already do doing it. That's why you're questioning today. You're, you're removing fear. You're following your heart, which is your passion. So, like, literally, on a Grandmaster Capricorn day, a Capricorn you is calling. And you're talking about exactly what it is that you are contemplating doing right now. You're literally describing this. When you look at this video uh, a month from now, six months, a year from now, you go two years, five years ago, that was the point where I made the decision. You've already made the decision. You're just talking it out. And, and I'm needing to because, you know, this path of... I mean, my gift is also, like all of us, our gifts are our strengths unless we're really conscious, is my beliefs, or they become can become our, our weaknesses. But this journey of dealing with terror in my life, but still moving forward, and it's such, and I think you understand this, it's such a visceral thing for me, so, and it is for everyone, but it's deep. And, um, you know, when I was talking, you're here to You're here to share that with others. That's what you're doing. You're getting the maximum amount of the experience of this dysfunction so that you can help others through it. That's your, that's your job as a Capricorn, your mm -hmm. teacher. Yeah, I 
I like that. I mean, in other ways I've been doing all my life is that, um, you know, going through the stuff I've been through, that's what makes me a good teacher and therapist is I can step into someone's shoes very easily and feel what they feel. Um, but I want to, I want to move through this, Gary. I don't want to, you know, the, when I'm weaning off clozapon, it's, it's tough. You know, yeah, you know, you're, you're uh, Mark Liu, who's probably on this podcast. He was finally the guy that got me to do it daily. Um, he, cause he was uh, addicted to opiates after being stabbed and shot. He was addicted to opiates for 10 years. Couldn't get off. Of them. And he goes, well, he, I said, well, how'd you get off the opiates? He goes, you're in therapy. And I'm like, really? Okay. Now he got my attention. How long did it take you? One day. And it's a feedback mechanism that the body's looking for. Um, when people under, people will understand this, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of stuff is good for us is, is, is completely made into something that's bad. Like for example, the, the pharma companies, the biggest pharma companies own all the Porter John companies. Because they port take what are Porter Johns, those, those, those portable oh. toilets. Oh. Because, yeah. Because they take the urine. And they use it for medication. Really? And topical. Yeah, absolutely. This is not this is not a conspiracy. This ah. is true. Yeah. It's because it's it's all it's used in different forms in skincare issues. It's used in steroids. I used to take a steroid that was made out of it called um, Anavar for cutting up the body, getting us ripped. It's used in all kinds of health health drugs and stuff like this. And they have to get it from somewhere. I mean, the easiest way to get it is is build a company that catches the supply, and it's freely given. So, of course, they don't want competition. Of course, they don't. Yeah. Yeah. I, listen, you were going somewhere with with with. Uh, I forgot to train a thought, but going somewhere with. You were talking about getting off. Off the opiates and a feedback mechanism well, and so what it does is it closes a feedback loop in the body because mm -hmm. the body if, if we were not truly meant to eat and nasa has studied two people published papers about them that they that they that they exist off of sunlight their body recycles water so they see water going to the bladder the bladder reuses it because what's in that water is all the signaling components to build all the hormones. If I have to rebuild the hormones every single time, my body uses all this energy to rebuild the hormones. There's nothing that's more stressful in our body than that. Mm. And so, and this is NASA science, not mine. They were, they were showing that the bladder would fill up and the body would reuse it. And that's what I experienced when I was in my fast. Because when I was in my fast, I urinate every two or three days and barely. Mm. And I, I drank virtually nothing either. Mm. Because I didn't have to clean anything else. So that cycle, it gets broken when I eat food, drink a lot of water, and I urinate it out. Like the current one, you know, I, you know, I've been doing this, telling people to do this for 20 years. Drink half your weight in ounces. And I'm like, like that is the stupidest thing to do, man. It is absolutely ludicrous to pour more water, which is a solvent, into our body. And we pour H2O, which is a solvent. So what happens with this feedback loop is that my, my body's processing, it builds all these hormones to do what it needs to do. Then it puts the information from that into the body. Now, if I keep pushing pressure on it, more water and more water, the body has to expel it. So it doesn't get to reuse that urine. So mm -hmm. it gets the, the body's habituated into just getting rid of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you you're not, that's what I've gathered from what you said. Obviously, I'm taking the minerals, um, you know, the supplements from you guys. And the mineralization, that's what you're talking about. Hydration is through the minerals, getting up. And the, yeah, you, it's about what you, keep, what you keep in your body, not what you drink. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I think, and I, I said this to you last time, but I think I want, you, you sharing some of the, the work you do on people down there and in other places for me personally, because talking about that, that terror that stuck in my stomach, when I saw a few of the videos over the weekend, you were working on a woman and, and uh, health nut. 
that resonates with me. So that work is work I need to do on myself and, and try to find some partners here in Chicago to work because the, the gut stuff for me and the other stuff, just watching it is healing. And I know the brain, there's a part of our brain that's called mirror neurons, yeah. that when we want something happening, it, if that part of the brain lights up. But I think the showing of that is he, on healing for some of us, just seeing it, it gives me hope that going into the body and really, really release a lot of stuff that what I was talking about, that sort of terror that sits in the gut for me, I think lies in doing the deeper work in the gut. Yeah, and it'll the, come up. You're, you're just, you're making a dis, you you're making a decision today, I can tell, to no longer live in fear and to follow your heart and explore your passions. That's the decision that you're making, I can tell just by talking to you. And, and you're talking about all of the things around it that either that either stop you from doing it or that are enabling you to do it. That's what's going on. It right is. Now. And it's very, very helpful. I want to tell you how big this is. They don't, I'll tell you one other, I'm curious, one other fear before I let other people down is that do you ever, I, I get scared a lot these days. And it's more like about when pain comes up, when I'm releasing pain out of the body, I don't want to go to a hospital. I'm scared of going to doctors. I'm just part of it's financial, part of it's the reality of going. Even checking my blood pressure, I don't like doing. It just brings up terror. It's that I don't know. You know, that's that's old trauma. That's and old, I'm finding myself old trauma. I mean, look at it. It's going to be all right, anyways. So if I'm not, if, I don't know if you can fast forward in ten years and know you're okay, then you wouldn't bother with any of the crap that you're doing today to scare yourself or validate that you're not scared. How do you how do you deal with fear when it comes up, or have you had does stuff in your body ever scare you? It it has. You know, this this last year, I've had moments where stuff in my body scared me. I've had moments like when I was moving stuff around in my face, like a, a year and a half ago. I'm like, is this OK? Is this really OK? And I had those moments. But what it is, it's fear coming out of the body. My brain is looking for a reason to validate it so it can stop thinking about it. So. Okay. So my brain is going to hold on to any narrative. So I just know the narratives aren't true. So I just keep going back to hello, fear. Thank you for being here. What do you want me to see? And I just keep saying that over and over and over again until eventually it dissipates. Again, mm. it's, an, it's an emotion looking for yeah. a narrative. And if yeah. I give it the narrative, it, it goes, oh, okay. It, does, it stops thinking. It stops looking. And it just goes away. But it comes back again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this work, Gary, and I'm not far enough into it yet to speak. I'll tell you, I know a lot about neuroscience. I know a lot about trauma and, and EMDR and different trauma treatments. But this is a, to me, and you know, and you're showing it, has a really powerful effect, a potential to be a trauma treatment for people. It, it's that, the most powerful trauma treatment that I know. That's why I closed the clinic. There's yeah. nothing. EMDR, uh, biofeedback, plant medicine. They all do one thing. They stimulate a response in the body. When the body has all the healing mechanism it needs, it lets go of trauma. We didn't have trauma like this 30 years ago, 50 years ago. The, the general population didn't experience trauma. Somebody who had been shot at in war did, but the general population didn't have all this stuff, didn't have anxiety. Yeah, that, that part, I because I know there's generational trauma, and I know my ancestors from Ireland, they came over with with terror. Yeah. They came over. Yeah, you, yeah, I, yeah I, I get that. But we didn't live in trauma. Today, Today, if you, when I used the word clinically, like uh, 10 years ago, I said, your body's having a traumatic response. I, I, I don't, I didn't go to war. I didn't, I'm not using drugs. I'm not, people wouldn't even identify with the word trauma. Now, every single person's, my trauma from this, my PTSD from this, my this, that. It's like, come to, it's like normal language today. I think some of that is, good because i think there was a lot of denial in the in the old days at least growing up i'll speak for myself and what i studied is there was a lot of um things that really overwhelmed the nervous system that's what i call trauma it's just too much energy in the body for it to hold well, that you you got it right there but why is the body holding it the body used to process it naturally that's the whole point yeah well, well yeah Chemicals. if you chemicals yeah. with the advent of chemicals we became a traumatized society yeah no no doubt no doubt i also think there was strong beliefs about not feeling in the old generations you just pushed it down and yeah. didn't deal with it. i get it but we weren't dysfunctional like we are today 
Yeah. yeah. But I, I just work, the thing I know is the work you're doing is, you know, Basil van der Kolk, the body keeps score. A lot of the trauma therapists don't talk about fascial and fascial movies. So yeah, I, because they, they, they want trauma to be here, but we don't have trauma here. This just tells us the brain is not in charge of the body. This is fundamentally where where what we do is different than the rest of the world. Like you can go with EMDR. I'm very familiar with these practices. I've used them for, for decades. You can go with EMDR. You can change the way that this interprets something from here, but you didn't change why it was happening in the first place. Right. And over time, people get worse and worse. They trade, they, they trade short-term short -term pain or feeling of pain for sedating or they're not rewiring the body. You're not rewiring the body when we when we put electrodes on the head. This is the whole, even the, the principles of fascial maneuvers and how they make muscles perform. Why do muscles stop performing? Trauma. Mm -hmm. What is trauma? Re repetitive use without ability to recover. And so we used to do we used to do programming, neural programming of the brain to make the body work, and we're good at it. I mean, we 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 took Olympic athletes and gave them all medals doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now I know the better way is to not reprogram the brain is to take away what the brain is dealing with. Take, take away the restriction. What we're restricted, we're restricted from releasing stress from our body. You give anybody 28 days, that's a 28 day reset. They still all of a sudden stand outside of their body and then the trauma starts to process. Mm -hmm. It's the most effective trauma release tool. That's where we have colleges and universities all over the world right now that are diving deep into this. Yeah, you know, I want to, I work with schools and work with parents and teachers. I want to, it's how to, how to bring it in so they can listen. There's so much, the work I do is around social emotional learning. It's hard just to get that into the, into some of the schools in the United States because of the belief, because of people's fear of going into the body. It's changing it's, fast. It, so, it, it is. It, 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 it is. It's going to change at an accelerated rate over the next 18 months. It's going to go from nobody heard of it to everybody's now talking about it. You can already see it already through media and culture. People are talking about it. They're talking about the body, fascia, fascia. Like if I said fascia, your trauma was held in your fascia 10 years ago, people are like, what are you talking about clinically? Now everybody, including clinicians, are going, that's true. So we're at that tipping point where it's been a long, it has been an uphill battle, but that, that battle is over now. That's good. Well well, I, I hope because I think so much of schools, I think these maneuvers and, and social emotional learning would really help kids process their emotions, be able to learn more efficiently, behavior, everything else. So I, I, I look forward to trying to figure, do this by myself first and see how I can bring it in with other people to do it. Well, that's um, what you're doing. You're, you're creating, you're already in that process. It's people like you and there's hundreds of thousands now that are in programs especially around colleges and kids and therapies and family help that are implementing these what's going to come is at the same time over the next 18 to 24 months all of these new ideas that's why our intellectual property is free use it we want you to use it and as a matter of fact you use it good enough you make something that makes sense we'll promote it it's uh it's that's an amazing mission you have and it's and i'm glad you're doing it if there's any way i know there's a parenting group i'm glad you're working around parents because uh i'm a firm believer that what you do in the first three years of life and at birth has an enormous impact yeah. and uh i'll be curious somehow maybe to contribute in some way down the road to that um, and you know you know um the one thing i can tell you is that we we can reprogram down to the moment of conception and the trauma that is in our body and the trauma we're born with generationally. That's what I'm personally doing right now. And that's what I see in the people that I'm working with. Like we're, we're here talking about the retail part of fascial maneuvers, which is, is what happens when you start doing them. The whole 28 day reset lifestyle artist, level one, level two, uh, facilitator trainer. Those are what happens when you take the stress out of your body and the trauma starts moving. How do you integrate it into your life? Where what people see on the outside right now is, is where we were three years ago with this scratching the surface. Mm. We are in a, such a different place right now. It's, you know, I, um, I, as I've said several times here, I'm deeply, deeply thankful for the work that you do and Jason does and Lisa does, all the people. And 
because it's profound work, the effect it's had on me during a very challenging time and the inspiration and the hope it's given me is huge. And, and I just want you to know that at a dark time because trauma has been a part of my path and going through it and helping others has been a part of my path, but you've given me a deeper hope for myself. And uh, look at this, it's enormous. Tom, your energy is shifting daily. People can even see it because they, they've had enough exposure to you. Well, I thank you again for your mission. Thank you for living your mission and being who you are, Gary, and, uh, you know, continue the work. And I, again, look forward to connecting down the road. And, and I want to get more in Chicago here. We don't have the best weather right now. We have 20 below the last few days, and it's a bit challenging. But uh, other seasons here are wonderful. I look forward to I'm looking forward to, to coming to Chicago. I would love it. In summertime, spring or fall would be beautiful to have you here. Thank you. For all okay, well, maybe maybe that maybe enough enough people in Chicago will be there. Maybe we'll be there this uh, this uh, this That'd summer. That'd be wonderful. It's right in the middle of the country. It's a great place to come. So yeah, I, I used to have an office in Deerfield. Really? Yeah. Beautiful. Well, again, thank you for the time. Thank you for the support, thank Gary. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Take care. Bye. Bye. Care. Yeah, that was a good chat. You can see. By by watching Tom, for those of you guys who have been watching for a while, you can see the changes. Go back and look at previous versions. And and you can literally see the transformation that's happening in his life and in his body. And, and look at Team Tom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a, a, it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing what's going on. You guys, we, we are, we are changing the world by changing ourselves. And it is so true. As I change myself, the people around me automatically change, whether they know it or not. Yeah, yeah. he has transformed. I can't wait to see what, what it's gonna look like in a month or two months. And you can see where people are in their journey too. Okay, everybody, so uh, a couple things coming up. Tomorrow we have Raw Reality, and uh, that's with Raw of Earth. One of my favorite talks, um just because of where we go uh if you haven't done it yet there's a class in new york get yourself out to the new york class new york class if you're in the 28 day reset and you're anywhere around new york get yourself out to that class it will change your life i promise you especially if you haven't done them in a group environment yet um we are looking to be in the united states we're looking for media partners and event partners uh we're looking to be in the los angeles area in the um um texas austin austin texas area in new york and in florida and we're looking for some people to help stimulate us to be there we can draw an audience and we want to collaborate with somebody else who can draw an audience and who has resources there already has resources already can help with where to go what to do who to who to talk to just take some of the learning curve up for us um Super excited about that. Also, if you haven't done it yet, get into the 28 day reset. Uh, you can get into the first one. I think you've got three more days or maybe two more days. You get two more days to get into, if you've not registered yet, to get into the next reset, which starts on the first, because you have to do the one day, three day and seven day first. So I believe you got two more days to get into that reset. Go to our website and start there. And look, looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.